Well, I finally bothered to go grind out Hush, the last of the pinnacle weapons for this season, so we're going to talk about that today. Along with some underperforming archetypes of weapons, why they've been bad, and maybe how they could get better. Hush is the Gambit pinnacle weapon for this season, a bow with improved archer's tempo called Archer's Gambit, which lets you fire another arrow quickly after hitting with a hip-fired headshot. First off, if you're going to chase this weapon, do it in regular Gambit, not Gambit Prime. Gambit Prime has far too many orange health bar enemies, and you will be contributing almost nothing to your team. As for which bow to use, I like Le Monarch the most, but people also liked the Vow because of its faster fire rate. You'd think Trinity Ghoul would be a lock for this, but Trinity Ghoul, at least to me, feels like it's better at closer ranges. I also found it pretty inconsistent, but against targets like Hive and Fallen, it's a little bit better. Trinity Ghoul is also not exactly the best against invaders. Anyway, within the bow archetype, Hush ain't too shabby. The draw speed bonus is very noticeable, and Archer's Gambit lasts a whopping 7 seconds, much longer than Archer's Tempo's 2-3 to three seconds, and much like Tempo, both refresh on hit, not kill, which is great. I have an Arsenic Bite 4B with Archer's Tempo and Rampage with a Draw Time Masterwork, which we will be comparing to. Arsenic Bite is pretty solid. Fast initial draw time, Rampage is great for dealing with major or higher health targets that happen to be splashed in whatever you're doing, although irrelevant if you're just killing low tier enemies. Archer's Gambit's draw time bonus is probably the most noticeable draw time bonus I've ever noticed on a bow before. It is significant and you can fire faster than an Archer's Tempo Arsenic Bite, about 10 frames faster on average which is about a sixth of a second. Which is great because Hush does more damage per shot too because it has a slower initial draw speed. The only difference is that you need to proc Archer's Gambit with Hipfire, which isn't too terrible because Hush has opening shot. Only at the longest of ranges is it tough to proc it. That being said, I think the choice of bow you make is ultimately not a game changer. I think maybe I'd rather use Hush in the Crucible since Rampage is very difficult to stack in the Crucible. And then in PvE, it kind of depends on what I'm doing. Arsenic Bite might just barely win out in PvE because of Rampage, but Rampage only lasts so long, so I don't think it really matters. I will say Hush is very satisfying to use in PvE as far as bows go. As for PvP, well, I'm much more of an aimer, and while the bonus of getting a faster shot from a hip-fire headshot seems quite illustrious, I still feel like you're going to need to play the same way that you would with most other bows, which is a lot of peak shooting around corners. Taking someone head-on is kind of rough, and getting to utilize that super fast speed of Archer's Gambit is probably not going to happen as often as you'd like. The only reason you should go get Hush is if you're a completionist or really, really like using bows in Destiny 2. Otherwise, I don't think you need to bother. Which brings us to the second half of this video, which is auto rifles, scout rifles, and bows in Destiny 2. Autos, scouts, and bows have not really made major contributions in Destiny for a while now. And, well, I want to talk about that, starting with bows while we're on the topic. A question that I get, the only question that I get about bows, is do you think Bungie will ever do anything to bows? What that means is are bows ever going to get to a spot where they aren't a really niche option or will they ever be a competitive option in literally anything? And I think the answer as of right now is probably not. They're like sidearms. They're not really designed to be killing machines, although sidearms are better than bows at killing stuff. Bows are a hybrid of snipers and scout rifles. The issue is that their damage is way too high for the average low tier mob and way too low for any major that is remotely threatening. Having them deal more damage would potentially encroach on sniper territory, although I do think you could buff their damage a little bit and have it be okay. Having them shoot faster might create a PvP issue. I do think increasing the speed at which you can shoot arrows would be helpful to start, maybe just like fractions of a second. I wouldn't mind seeing them be a bit better against orange health bar enemies, so that way you don't feel so useless just plinking away at them. 
They're not an efficient weapon at all. They're a for fun kind of archetype weapon, although your definition of fun may vary. Scout rifles have been irrelevant for most of year two of Destiny 2 in both PvE and PvP. In PvE, their damage just hasn't really been anything spectacular. That's definitely part of the issue. When we can destroy enemies with things like recluse, grenade launchers, hand cannons, and whatever else, why am I going to slowly plink away with a scout rifle? Not to mention, player speed is pretty high, and when you can run and gun so easily with other weapons, using a scout rifle just leaves you really far behind. Another reason scouts aren't really vital is because the average Destiny activity is pretty easy. Being able to shoot from really far away is a valuable thing in certain activities. Activities where you will die easily from damage or where you need to play it really safe. The thing is, those activities don't really exist for the most part, and the couple that do, maybe like Heroic Menagerie, are in really tight spaces. When you can absolutely crush the majority of activities in the game and when death isn't that much of a penalty, who cares about playing it safe? There's no point at all. The only point in a strike where the team actually stops moving for any amount of time is when you're waiting for the final boss to spawn so that you can destroy that in two seconds. A PvE and PvP hybrid issue is also map design and player space. Before we start this section, yeah, many of the PvP maps in Destiny 2 right now were designed with 4v4 in mind, which definitely contributes to the problem. A lot of PvE arenas are somewhat compact spaces where most other weapons can excel. The average PvP map is pretty tight, save for Equinox, aka the big map. There aren't many places where you can make a scout rifle a top tier pick. You can be good with them, sure, and good players are going to make them work, but besides Equinox, the amount of maps where a scout rifle is the best option for the average player, I think, is approximately zero. Shotgun rushers are literally everywhere, and it doesn't take a lot of effort to either push someone using a scout, or to just not go where they are, or to just completely outgun them because you're using a faster killing weapon or just a better weapon in general. It's so easy to take a few steps closer to someone using a scout and just maul them with a hand cannon. Speaking of which, another threat to scout rifles has been the overwhelming dominance of pulse rifles and to a lesser extent, hand cannons. Pulse rifles are just plain better than scout rifles and have been for a long time. Blast Furnace and Go Figure can kill in two bursts, Vigilance Wing as well. Not only that, but on most PvP maps, these pulses have little to no damage fall off due to the size of the maps and where typical encounters happen. The map design is partly to blame for this, sure, but the range stat on pulse rifles is also partly to blame for those longer sight lines. When you can outrange an auto rifle, no problem, but also can cause scouts and snipers to flinch out of control with three to four bullets per trigger pull, why wouldn't you? If scout rifles ever want to see major relevance again, a few things need to change. Map design needs to be more in their favor, along with activity design. Their damage should come up a bit as well in PvE, and pulse rifles might need to come down in power, specifically with regards to range. The issue there is that if you bring pulses down, then maybe they get too close to autos, and then we create a whole new problem. Auto rifles have been largely unpopular for similar reasons to scout rifles, mainly damage related in PvE. I haven't done any actual damage testing on auto rifles at all really, but their damage just doesn't really seem to match up to other options like hand cannons, pulse rifles, and submachine guns, or rather, I should say, Huckleberry and Recluse. In PvE, there isn't a reason to use something that deals less damage than another option in the primary slot. There's just not. In PvP, they need to compete with hand cannons in largely the same range. Once an auto rifle is out of its effective range, it might as well not even exist in your hands anymore. The damage fall off is pretty significant. But when we have Ace of Spades, Last Word and Thorn, Ostringer, you pick it, auto rifles are just not going to be able to really compete with them. You almost need to rely on your opponent missing shots in order to kill them since autos just can't kill fast enough. That or you need to practice your positioning and your timing in PvP, knowing when to engage and when not to. Suros Regime is the only actual contender in the exotic auto rifle category, and while it can shred people in PvP with spinning up activated, you need to be quite accurate for fast kills, and if you're that accurate, you're maybe just using something else. Galoran's right hand, a drop from the raid, 
is actually not too bad in PvP either. It's what I'm using right now. But it's definitely not a top tier consideration across all weapons and needs some help via perks for it to be competitive, at least for the average player. Anyway, that's all I got on scouts, autos, and bows. Let me know how you're feeling about them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.